Another thing you may just want to use your parse cloud code to do is actually just to call functions. So we showed you the simple hello function, but let's add something a bit more complicated. So if we go back into our parse server code and we look at reset player notes.js, that's in the functions folder. So that's how I separate out my cloud code. I have functions that I just want to call directly from my client code. I have them in a the functions folder and triggers that get called automatically when I save and update objects in my triggers folder. So I've created a function. So this is something I actually expect to call explicitly from my client code. Now what I've done here is I've, well, I've imagined that there's a, a notes column associated with each football player. But what I want to do is every now and again from the client code, I want to call a function called reset player notes, which just goes through each of the players and just sets the notes to an empty string. One of the reasons I wanted to show you this function is just so I can show you how to use the master key. So by default, when running some code in the parse cloud in the, in the define function, it just gets called assuming that no user is logged in and therefore it doesn't get run as any particular user. In fact, it gets run as, as if no user is logged in. So therefore, if you've added some ACLs or some security to your player object, then all of that would fail because Pars would expect only certain authenticated users, users from being able to save the player object. But if we add at the, at the top of our function key, this means that for the rest of this function, it's going to run as if you have super user admin permissions and you can save whatever uh, changes you want to any object. And again, this only runs, this is only available in the cloud code. You can never run this or call this from your client code, which makes sense really. So what am I doing here? So in, in fact, I can just get rid of this counter. I don't think I need that anymore. Okay. So what I'm doing is I'm getting a query for the player and then for every single player object, I'm going to set the player notes field to blank and I'm just going to save the player. Now player.save returns a promise. So I'm returning that to the each function. So, but what is this each function? We haven't seen that before. So let's have a look in the API. So if we look on parse query, let's look for each. So each is a really useful feature when you want to just iterate over a bunch of um, items returned from a query. The callback that you pass into each will be called for each and every result that's returned from the query. But interestingly, if you return a promise in the callback, it will actually wait for that promise to be resolved before it loops over its results there and calls the callback on the next item in the list. This can be useful sometimes, especially if you want things to work sequentially. There's no particular reason I'm using this in this code on the server side. I just thought I'd, I'd show you it so you can try it out, so you can see how it works. Again, I recommend for you just to read through the API documentation, especially the parse query, because it's so, so important. And there's so many other little nifty little functions here that you can use. But anyway, going back to our code. So I'm looping through each, I'm setting the notes to zero. And because save returns a promise, I'm returning that save as part of this callback function. So once the query has been looped through, we then call this function and if it's all been a success then player reset completely successfully if something returned an error so let's say that one of these players returned an error when you tried to set the notes to to blank i don't know why that would happen but imagine that did one of these promises returned an error then this error error code will be called which again would would respond with an error to your uh, client code but anyway just a really simple cloud code function which I wanted to show you just so you can see the use of the use master key. And also just to show you this funky little each function which is available on the parse query object. But again, to make this work, just make sure you require it in the main.js. And then let's just make sure this is pushed to the server side. So, okay, that's all deployed correctly. And now let's just call this function from our client code. Now again, so all you need to do to run code on the server side is to run parse.cloud.run and then the name of the function that you want to call. So 
our function we called reset player notes. So let's just call that from our code here. So now run clear, refresh, and now I'm going to press run. And there we go. Now this gets returned from the server when our specific cloud card function completed successfully. So now theoretically, if I go into the players section of the dashboard, refresh because I've added a column, I'm expecting a column called notes. So again, if I was to add a note, this player is good. So I've added, I've added this note to this player. When I now hit run, now it's the cloud code function has run again. So if I go back into the parse dashboard, refresh, I should expect this notes field to have gone back to a blank field again. And there you go, it has, it's gone back to a blank field. So there's just a few examples of how you can use parse cloud code. I showed you how you can use it to perform validations by hooking into the before save trigger. I've showed you how to hook into the after save and after delete triggers and add the ability to summarize bits of data throughout the uh, in your platform to make uh, future queries perhaps uh, faster. And I then showed you how to actually run, actually create functions which can be run on the server side code and called explicitly from the client code by calling uh, parse.cloud.run. And I've showed you how to bypass a lot of the security which we've added in into our parse code by using the use master key function on the server side.